this is handy. He's got a little jib crane here for lowering the outboard onto the dinghy. Okay, Al, that means the boat's ours. Cuba. Cuba. Yeah, we got the little shop back out and we are vacuuming the vent for one of the tanks because it seems to be clogged. There's two tanks, one port and one starboard, and they're connected together. The fuel wasn't flowing from one of them to the other, so we think it may be a vent. It's just gotta get air into the tank in order to let the fuel go from unused tank over to used tank. And then it began to rain. It's actually kinda nice. Look, there's sarcasm in the sea. I think the real name is Sargasm, but I like sarcasm better. It just fits my style. And it's not in really big pieces, but it clumps together. I never knew it had little spines on its leaves. And it's got like little seed pods. Maybe they're floats. Yeah, they're hollow. Tastes like fish. That there is Bahama Blue. She was anchored next to us the other night over at uh, Turks and Caicos, and she's about 200 feet long. She's doing this the courtesy of making a left hand turn so she passes it behind us. So good. Oh, we can lash you. We'll lash you yeah. Oh, and get this, I was looking at those charts the other night. They actually have traffic circles for ships. Good guess. And you know what I have not seen since I've been out here? There's another sailboat. You guys need to get out of here. It's empty. Those are 12 foot waves and it's blowing about 23 miles an hour. Scope of me doesn't work. But I figure with this, I can eat twice a day, lose weight. Well, this is how we do dishes on a boat moving seven knots at a 20 degree heel. You stand on what you can, you hold on to what you can. Wait for the roll. And wait for the roll. And see, there you go. You gotta brace yourself and just figure everything out. Well, the wind is up, so are the waves. Got just uh, the main with uh, two reefs in it. And uh, the downside to it is we're only making three knots. The wind is gusting 25, sometimes 30. This is sailing school. Okay, maybe you do get used to the four on, four off. I actually just woke up this morning and it's still kind of dark out when I did, so. And this here is what 20 foot seas look like. They don't still all stand up and they're not all 20 footers, but every once in a while you find one and it hops on board the boat with you. Charlie back there, he's been taking several showers this night. He must Cold be. Water showers are awesome. It is surprisingly warm when it hits you. So a little on waves, they uh, they can be 25 feet tall or 15 feet tall, but they also have an interval. That's uh, the distance between one wave crest, like that one right there, and that one over there. And that is measured in time. So these are about seven seconds apart. And there's two types of waves out here. There's a, there's a swell, which is more regular. And then there's this windblown shit, which is on top and it mixes in. That's why you see these peaks jump up every once in a while like that because they come together. So it's always a convergence of these swell driven waves and the wind driven waves that that's why they jump on board sometimes so easily. And then there's something called fetch and that's the distance this wave has had to build over the ocean. And since that's all Atlantic Ocean out that way, these waves have had a lot of time. So the longer the wind blows from the north, the bigger the swell gets. And then the wind top waves kind of mess with it because the wind's kind of out of that direction. And you really gotta take some time, you know, spend some time on a boat watching them to appreciate just how complicated this whole system is. I thought, yeah, oh, there's big waves, they roll at you, you go up, you go down. Nah, it's a lot messier than that. And at nighttime, you got a lot of time for contemplation and I'm reading the perfect book for it. It's called Until the End of Time by a physicist. His name is Brian Green. Fascinating stuff. It's basically how the universe started, everything through it, you know like consciousness and thought and then how it will inevitably end it's not a good story okay it, it ends harshly but we won't be alive I, you know it's funny that people think well you know if it's all just gonna be for nothing what difference does it make and that's totally not true I hate that idea because it's about how you can affect people in your life today here and now and if you do that what more can you want it's fun it's joyful it can put some joy in their life and they return it back to you 
be nice to people. It's the best thing you can get out of this. Seasickness footnote. I'm back on Dramamine. I need the hard stuff bad. <laughs> I was puking my guts out last night. But you know, I've always thought that seasickness was you feel miserable and you throw up and you feel miserable. I throw up, I feel fantastic after that, okay? Even if it's just a little leftover of, you know, 12 hour old breakfast, it makes me feel better. So Dramamine is my thing. Now the downside to Dramamine makes your ears ring. I don't know. I haven't looked at the long term effect of Dramamine, but I think it's going to be my drug of choice. Better than heroin, right? Oh yeah, it has been raining a lot. And I left my rain gear at home. But the best thing you can leave at home is a bad attitude. These guys that I'm selling with, that makes it nice. Over to 37 miles an hour now. The problem with this rain is it changes the wind directions and it's a squall sometimes, so it can blow a lot harder when you're inside one. You just see some of those waves out there starting to break, so you can see why that hood over the life vest would be so important. Once that really gets going, that's a lot of water coming down over your head. Well, that is the Dominica Republic, where we're going to stop and rest. And look at there. There's a cow ship over there. That's right, cruise ship weenies, sea lice, you name it. They came here last night before us, passed us up, just left us back there, having fun. This is just over from the port entrance. The military has closed down the port until the waves calm down. Apparently they don't think it's safe to sail in that. I'm with my people here. Man, I like the color down here. Betsy, you taking notes? Okay, the last thing you want to happen when you're at sea is to run out of fresh water. We ran out of fresh water. Let me show you the problem. You know, we feel okay because we got a water maker, right? While at anchor, the only time you could possibly hear this, I heard water running up here. Those are the water maker's pre-filters. This is its backwash filter. In other words, you run water from the tank back to blow all the salt water out of the membrane up there. And this was mounted on the wall using 5200. And look, in a test I did with 5200, it did the same thing. It actually yanked the paint off the wall. When it did that, it slid down and that press-on fitting up here came loose, just it was cocked over at an angle. We lost all of our fresh water from the pump. Now on Seeker, my pump is loud and it's up in a cabin, so you'd probably hear it, but over storm waves, you're probably not. So what I'm probably gonna do is put indicator lights uh, up on the dashboard to tell me when a bilge pump and when a water pump is running. And if it stays on for too long, well, you know you've got a problem then. And that would have saved us from pumping all of our water into the bilge. We actually saw a lot of water in the bilge and thought that was odd, tasted it, but it had salt water mixed in with it, so it tasted salty. So off and overboard it all went. The other thing to do is when you're under heavy sea conditions, turn all that shit off. You know, you don't need your fresh water. Eh, it'd be inconvenient, yeah. But, you know, get a water bottle that plugs up, turn all that stuff off so that if something does break, you don't lose your water. And then, you know, we can we have a water maker, we can make water. No, not not in not in no, six foot seas, not even motoring at one knot could we make water because air comes underneath the boat and it goes up into the uh, uh, boost pump. See, and then and then the main pump. They both cavitate, so you got to wait. We made maybe two gallons and decided, well, we'll get into uh, someplace else. And it's a harbor with no pump out, so we're not going to make water here. Even I have my standards. This gets glued back on. First, we're going to scratch up that gel coat back there and take it down to fiberglass a little bit so this sticks better. Got me a dry block of wood. It was hard to find. Okay, we got to say goodbye to Al and Doug. Doug has work. Al, I don't know what Al's doing. Nothing. Something black op, I think, is necessary. That's where it's, we can't talk about it, can we? No. Okay, so anyway, these two guys are off. And Charlie and I, we're bringing, we we're bringing somebody else in? Yeah, I'm going to fly Wilder in. Wilder's coming in. Oh, like, and he, Wilder knows how to sail? Yeah, well, no, not really. He's, well, he's, he, like, Leaf as good as Doug? He can cook. Oh, hey. fuck now. Cook's always, <laughs> cook's, cook's, <laughs> cook's always worth it, so, you bet. These guys are back on planes from the, uh, where the hell are we? Dominican Republic? Yeah, Dominican we're in the Republic. Yep. Yeah. We'll see y'all later. And Doug gave us the t-shirts here. Captain Sea Money's Grid Adventure. Check out the back. But did you die? <laughs> Oh, that's a nice bit of air.
maybe some dryness. Okay.